Hello, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and in this section of our tutorial on the calculator we're going to focus on these nice three buttons in the middle here sine, cosine, and tangent and I suppose that they put them in the middle because they're some of the more frequently used buttons that you'll see on the calculator here and of course immediately related to that is what's printed in blue above inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent uh, don't get too confused by the way in which it's written you know, to the negative one like that. It, it, it means that it's the inverse, uh, the opposite of the sine, the inverse sine. Sometimes you might see it in a book as an arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent. Uh, but in this calculator it's written as um, raised to the power of negative one, just to tell you that it's an inverse. Um, we'll go off to the mode menu first and just see where we're at. We're set up in radian mode and uh, that's fine. You can switch it to degrees if you want depending on what you're doing in your homework or your test. You might be working in degrees or in radians. Most of the time, especially when you get out to college and, and in real life engineering, you'll be dealing with radians uh, almost all the time. So these buttons, really, there's nothing much more to it. If you remember the definition of, of uh, what sine and cosine and tangent is, you can do it all in terms of triangles, but the calculator, you know, because it's a little computer inside, it, it calculates the answer very quickly. So you'll just take the sine of, of one radian, it'll spit out the answer. Uh, you can take the inverse sine of a number. So in this case, let's go ahead and put the answer that we got back. And in this case, we'll take the inverse sine of the answer and we get back what we started with because that was the inverse. And it's really the same thing. Cosine of, you know, 52 radians is going to give us some number. Let's say inverse tangent of negative 0.5 is going to spit out a number. Whoops. Well, you can see here that I actually put a number in that, that it's not possible to take the inverse tangent of. So you can just go ahead and, and hit quit like it says, and it's going to give you an opportunity to, to go back to the screen and correct it. Let's go ahead and clear the screen. Uh, but in any case, you can see that, that you can take, uh, you know, negative 0.5 and uh, maybe take the inverse cosine of that, negative 0.5 and uh, it'll spit out a number in radians, 2.09 radians. And so that's sort of the big, the, you know, the, the big um, deal there. It saves a lot of time because, you know, you might want to square the answer. What's the sine of 14? And let's go ahead and square the answer, right? Well, actually, I don't have enough parentheses there. Let me go back, hit the delete key, close my parentheses, and then I'll go ahead and square it like this. So see, you've got the sine of 14 going on here, and the whole thing is wrapped up in parentheses, and I'm squaring the answer. And it's going to calculate the sine of 14, and then it's going to square the uh, result and give us back our answer. So just remember that if you're going to go in here and deal in degrees, that you need to have this guy highlighted like that. And now when you go in and use your trigonometric functions, everything's going to be in terms of degrees. So now sine of 90 is not the sine of 90 radians, it's the sine of 90 degrees, which is always 1. Uh, the cosine of 90 degrees is always going to be 0. And likewise, if you take uh, you know, 0 0.14, let me go ahead and clear that out. If we go ahead and take uh, inverse sine, let's say, of 0 0.14 and close it off, inverse sine of that is going to return a number that's in degrees, so 8 degrees. Uh, there and so those of you taking trigonometry or even geometry certainly on into calculus and stuff you'll be using these buttons all the time because you're just going to need to to, to do um, a lot of calculations with sine cosine and tangent um, all right so that covers that now let me give you one more thing those of you in advanced trig uh, are going to learn about the functions uh, uh, so sine cosine tangent cotangent secant and co cosecant so cotangent secant and cosecant uh, there are no buttons for those those functions on the calculator. However, in trig, you're going to learn that you know secant, cosecant, and cotangent can be defined in terms of these guys that are printed here. So, for instance, cotangent is one over tangent. So, cotangent of an angle is one over the cotangent of the uh, or one over the tangent of the same angle. So if you need to evaluate the, the tangent or the cotangent, don't look for a button on, on the calculator. You're just going to need to know what those relations are from trig and maybe take one over one of these trigonometric identities uh, here to get the answer. If you don't have any idea what a cotangent is or a cosecant is, then don't worry too much about that. It, those are sort of more advanced uh, things that you'll learn when you get into trig and in, into pre-calculus. 
I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. This concludes how we're going to use these trigonometric uh, entry buttons.